Hello my soccer universe! In round 20 of the Austrian Bundesliga season 23-24, Lask are facing the other team from the southernmost province Kärnten after Klagenfurt just two weeks ago. We have now Wolfsberger AC or VAC as we use only the acronym in Austria. Uh, I know in the English speaking world they are usually called Wolfsberger but that means only from Wolfsburg. If you want to call a team just call them Wolfsburg, which is the city that they're from, a city in the Lavantal in eastern Kärnten, so up in the mountains between two mountain ranges, but a city of about 25,000 people nonetheless. And as always, I want to use this opportunity of this upcoming match to talk a little bit about this team, a team that actually proves that you can have successful soccer in Kärnten without involving high politics and all kinds of scandals as we saw in the previous video. Okay, let's get started with the basics. The team was founded in 1931. The club's colors are black and white, although majority white as uh, of late. And there's a little bit red and green also going in because they have a sponsor. And so officially, they are called RZ Pellets, Wolfsberger AC, because you can have the um, main sponsor as part of your um, club name as well. Very typically Austria, right there. The team played their games in the Lavantal Arena, which is uh, a kind of old style Austrian stadium. It was built in the 80s. There's a running track around. It had one main stand when the team got promoted to the Bundesliga. They built another main stand. They also be, built a little 1000 capacity stand for uh, traveling supporters. Overall, the stadium holds around 8,100. It maybe has not uh, the best view of mountains, but when you see games from there, you get a lot of views from the surroundings. Also a few mountain ranges as well. So kind of picturesque. When it comes to the fan base, I honestly, I don't know too much. I mean, Wolfsburg are a very recent team. They are, of course, very much based in the uh, southeastern corner of Austria. Um, but, you know, there is the team from Klagenfurt that have their own team that we talked about. There's, of course, Sturm Graz and another uh, Graz team that uh, might be a big pull as well. However, in the region, the Lavantal region, I think the close surroundings, Wolfsburg is probably very well supported. They don't have a crazy spectator base. Uh, it's also not like in many big clubs that you can say, okay, these are more left or more right leaning. I honestly would think since, since it's mostly a rural fan base, what I would, would assume that's a little bit more of a conservative fan base, but that's all that I can really tell you. But that should not distract from the fact that this is actually a really well run club and overall well supported club a club that has been in the bundesliga for already quite a while and are actually you get the feeling they're more here to stay than anything else As you may imagine, when we talk about the his history, for most of the history, this was a club that was mostly playing in the regional leagues. However, this being Austria, uh, right after World War II, there was only one top league and then everything split out into smaller leagues. And by the 70s or late 60s, uh, Wolfsburg has established itself well into this second tier, more re regionalized league. Once the second division was founded uh, together with the Bundesliga in 1974, they were a founding member of that. Yes, they suffered a relegation in the late 70s from, from that, but quickly bounced back and then established themselves for quite a while in a mid-level. However, come the mid-80s, they suffered relegation and only bounced back twice, uh, but never really could re-establish themselves in the second tier. And it even went so bad that they then fell all the way into the fourth tier, if not even fifth tier, by the mid-2000s. However, conveniently, the club from the neighboring town had made it up to the third tier. And that was a way where uh, Wolfsburg and St. Andre, which is the neighboring town, we said, let's cooperate together. We will stay 
separate entities. However, we will uh, field teams that are made out of the best thing. We have one good, we have one uh, team with which we want to push into professional levels and another another team that can play of uh, a serve as a fee fee, fee fee the club in the lower levels of Kärnten if you would like. And that actually then allowed Wolfsburg by the mid 2000s to suddenly be in uh, the Regionalliga again and actually play a leading role there. So Regionalliga being the third tier. And in 2010, they got promoted to the second tier. At that time, they were called as VAC St. Andre, so basically to uh, um, reflect that they are a cooperating team. So they started in 2000, 2007. Uh, they get promoted in 2010 to the second tier, quickly established themselves on the top. And in 2012, they're for the first time promoted to the Bundesliga, at which point everything got dissolved again. Uh, there was a big saying that, okay, we will, uh, this will be now three teams. St. Andre starts at the bottom of the peer pyramid, whereas Wolfsburg gets two teams, a pro team and an amateur team. And being promoted, they also finished almost in fourth place and into European spots. On the last day, they had a tunnel lead at the Wolf have been enough, but they ended up three, two losers. So finishing fifth, but at the time this was a uh, sensation that this team that everyone thought that they might go down actually could re-establish themselves there. Uh, the following uh, seasons were then kind of, you know, uh, bounce back, you bounce back between um, uh, being almost relegation threatened and almost pushing for Europe. They actually qualify for, for Europe in um, 2015, where after beating Shakhtar Saligorsk, they also played Borussia Dortmund, but uh, eliminated from, from the Europa League with an uh, overall aggregate score of 0-6. Then it is basically the story of uh, being mid-table, but also falling into the relegation zone. Now it has, 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 has to be said, uh, one thing that Wolfsburg have been doing really, really well is finding young trainer talents. The coach that got them up was Nenad Bielica, uh, who maybe hasn't made himself such a big name overall, but currently is a Union Berlin coach. Uh, the team that pushed into the Europa League was actually uh, gave Dietmar Kübauer his first real job in professional uh, coaching, and he was rather successful there. Um, finding Heimut Pfeifenberger also made them level for a while. But when it seemed like in 2018 that the team might actually be on the verge of getting uh, relegated again, they found another coach. From Hartberg they got Christian Ilzer for a season and suddenly Wolfsburg were a force in the league, finishing in third place, where another part of their uh, structure uh, kicked in. Great scouting, finding important players that actually uh, you can even sell on. They also invested, for instance, in the Michael Lindel, who became uh, this big figure in Wolfsburg as well. But um, a season af afterwards, in um, 2019, they again finished in third place with Sean Weissmann uh, being a major fig fig figure there and then getting a move even to Spain. And with these two finishes came also the two most prominent European campaigns. At first, they even qualified in uh, on the back of the first uh, third third place finish in the 2018-19 season. They qualified for the 1920 Europa League group stage, where in their first ever match they beat Gladbach away from home 4-0, followed up by a 1-1 at home against Roma, only to lose them twice. The first one was a little bit unlucky to Bajakshi here, and thus the chances of it advancing were greatly diminished at the, at, at the point. They were eliminated with a 1-0 home loss to Gladklappach, but mentioned still in Rome a 2-2 away draw, uh, with basically saying, uh, also making on the social media quite some Im Im impact, posting a picture of the, of the Col 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 Coliseum and saying, hey, Ace Roma, we are here, where are you? As Roma, of course, bounce away. Yeah, you wait right there, in a way. Uh, they did one better the, 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 the following season. Again, they qualified directly for the group stage of the Europa League. Third, third place back then, already uh, qualified for that, where they finished in second place behind Dinamo Zagreb, beating Feyenoord 4-1 away from home, although this result is a little bit misleading. Also beating ZSK Moscow and then being eliminated 
ate one on egg aggregate by Spurs. However, that also ended the high period. Um, Christian Ilzer, after the first successful se season, was replaced by Gerhard Strober, who during this first Europa League uh, campaign was uh, getting hired by Barnsley. So uh, they got some, someone in, a uh, caretaker who did not work out, and they hired Ferdinand Feldhofer, who worked well for a while, but then also uh, had not a good relationship with the squad. And so it became an up and down again. You hire Robin Dutt, who again, Puts you a little bit back on the map. You uh, go in this uh, top group again. I think you finish uh, a fourth place. You again qualify for Europe, but this time you have to go in the qualification rounds, and it doesn't go so well being eliminated by Molde. And then you don't qualify for the championship round and not even looking good there. And this is where we are currently. So in its current state, as I said, the glory years for Wolfsburg seem a little bit over. I mean, with Robin Dutt, you got a really big coaching name. You did not get a young, successful coach, uh, a, a young-to-be coach. You got a, um, a rather established coach who uh, did well overall. Uh, but in the end, they needed the new spark. They hired Manfred Schmidt, who uh, did some good work at Austria Vienna. Um, however, the style is not this uh, high pressing machine that Wolfsburg used to be that got them successful. Um, it is more of a traditional style, however, with a good uh, attacking uh, duo up front. But at the moment, it is not clear whether Wolfsburg will make it into the top six in the championship round again which is the current state however the club is stable enough to not be relegation uh, threatened at least at this moment one part of the club that one has has to look at is of course the legacy you are living up there high in the mountains um how many how long can this be well supported uh, also, the stadium may eventually become an issue, although at the moment it is not, but it is very much an old-style stadium and the club may not have the resources to build a new stadium. Now, when it comes to the rivalry with Lusk, again, not a huge rivalry, but there have been quite a few matches. Um, it does is not reflected in the overall record. I mean, uh, the record is leaning definitely more towards Lask with uh, six home and six away uh, wins in the Bundesliga and um, six uh, losses overall. However, four of these came at home. There were three draws away from home. And this is kind of what I think that uh, Lask is always doing better in Wolfsburg than they're actually doing uh, at home. And also Wolfsburg have twice put Lask quite in some trouble, you know, uh, earning a third spot at the expense of Lask in, in 2020 in the Corona season. Also um, putting them almost in relegation trouble at one point. On the other hand, there's a big cup semi-final that Lusk won in overtime thanks to a Wiesinger penalty. So there you go. The two teams, um, you know, are not real rivalries. It's also not uh, really uh, a, f a, friend a friendship there. Uh, it's just two different calibers of clubs, one has to say. I also want to point out that uh, on one of his first games in Austria, Marin Ljubicic actually scored on the third um, day of the 22-23 season. Four goals in the 5-1 win of, uh, of Lask in Wolfsburg, which of course is a major achievement. Ahead of the game, and this is the same story as with Klagenfurt, Wolfsburg are pushing for the top six spot, although they are the team with the least chances of getting there. Whereas Lask has it more or less guaranteed. So this game means a whole lot more for Wolfsburg than for Lask. Or does it? Because Lask have not won this year. And they probably should have won at least one game. And so it's a really, really... A tight affair, I, I would think. What scares me in Wolfsburg, I, uh, Wolfsburg is the um, attacking line with Biakchi and Ballo. Again, two very well scouted players that probably will be sold on for profit relatively soon, but they are probably one of the most feared attacking duos in the league. On the other side, the defense for Wolfsburg is probably a little bit more shaky, so it will be an interesting matchup. As I said, means definitely more for Wolfsburg. So 
feel again leaning more towards a draw. Okay, that was it from me with my quick look at Wolfsburg. Please let me know uh, what you knew about this club or if you uh, have known about this club. I mean, mostly known in short circles is that they are full with sponsors, which is also a case for Austria. In any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and I'll talk to you soon about more stuff. Bye! Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!